was walking through the all ceramic department the other day and uh, saw something that I thought was worth uh, pointing out. It's just a, it's a two unit diagnostic wax up that a dentist has uh, had done for a patient where he's going to be preparing uh, two crowns. And um, one of the interesting things is that we now do these via CAD CAM. So a diagnostic wax up used to be done here in the lab. Uh, it took a lot of time and it was slowly done by a couple of different technicians who kind of specialized in it and they would hand wax everything up and carve it back and it would get stuck actually to the the model itself it would adhere to that and um, then if you liked how it looked and the patient liked how it looked you'd ask us to try to reproduce that in the final restorations which we could do with a varying amount of success based on the case these are now CAD CAM diagnostic wax up. So these are milled out of a white wax and then we can loot them onto the model. And the interesting thing about this is when we do that, we now save the design of the CAD CAM milled diagnostic wax up. And so this file, this design file gets saved in our servers. And so if you show the diagnostic wax up to the patient and the patient likes it, you go in and prepare the teeth and then say, please use that same file to mill my Emacs restorations, for example, or this uh, doctor actually prescribed um, Bruxer for this patient. And so this same design file can be used to mill the final restorations that was used to mill the diagnostic wax up. We used to have to try to guess at this a little bit when we would do it, but now thanks to CAD CAM, we can do it exactly the same and literally with the same file mill it except being out of wax which I could crush with my fingers here it can be with something stronger uh, such as Emacs or, or such as Bruxer and so if you look at the preparations this is what is required for the doctor to do to be able to achieve, uh, be able to achieve these final aesthetics and so one of the things that I've kind of played around with we've looked for a more translucent wax this isn't completely translucent but looking for something where when you're prepping these two teeth and you know you want to get enough reduction to be able to do this, I think it'd be nice to be able to have a set of these in something maybe a little bit stronger than wax, of course, like PMMA, where you could try them over the preps and as soon as they sat down all the way, you would know that you were done prepping. In fact, if it was something, you could almost use it to, you know, for your temporary if it was something a little bit stronger, but you could probably do uh, chair side temporaries and have them look really nice as well but you know as soon as this goes down into place that you've got enough preparation so that the laboratory is going to be able to duplicate this and so usually what we'll do is we'll do a suck down a thermal form stent over uh, these teeth to send to the doctor where you can try it in over it and that's not a bad way to do it the doctor used it on this case he actually didn't send it back or I'd, I'd show it to you but um, it's not probably as exact as being able to try two units on like that and having it go down um, into place. Uh, the doctor also gets a thermoformed version of this, of the uh, diagnostic wax up in place in case he wants to use this to fabricate the temps. Or the, the way that I'm more common with this, with, I'm more used to is this putty matrix, which you can make chair side, but we always send these out. And this is a, um, a putty matrix where we have putty and a wash material of the diagnostic wax up. So if you wanted to do chair side temps, you would just fill this with a bisacryl, put it in over the uh, temps and uh, be done with it after you trim it. But let's look at what the doctor actually did. Well, before we look at the model, here's uh, the impression. So it was a full arch impression, well, a full arch tray. The impression stopped a little short of that. We've got a little bit of the molars there. That's fine, that's gonna, that's gonna work. It'd be nice to have a little more, but we can work with that. We can see the margins, things look good. Um, I actually really like his bite registration. We just did a course here on bite registrations and all we want to see on a bite registration is the incisal third of the two prep teeth. So we could have even gone with a little bit less material. Um, we're just going to trim it with a scalpel. And then on the other side we have the incisal edges of the opposing teeth and that's all we want there as well. So a bite registration is not supposed to be a full arch horseshoe all the way around the arch when it's just two teeth in the front. All we want is the incisal third of the preps and the incisal third of the opposing teeth. We don't want any adjacent teeth, soft tissue contact. So that's perfect. That tiny little thing is actually exactly what we're looking for and is a perfect um, bite registration. So uh, back to his preparations. As we look at the preparations, let's compare it to what our technician did for the diagnostic wax up. And so the strict instructions that technicians have 
is to remove, and it's the same person who designs the uh, diagnostic wax up shells. So they're trying to remove the least amount of tooth structure to get an aesthetic uh, result for the patient. And so as we compare them, we can see that a little more was removed on the um, diagnostic wax up prep guide than we see here. And as we spin it over to the facial and try to look, a little more reduction was done in certain areas uh, on the facial. And the lingual sometimes can be hard to tell, but it looks like we still, in size of the ledge is a little bit thicker. And when this got scanned, it looks like there's now not enough room to be able to accomplish you know, what was done here with the diagnostic wax up. And that's one of the reasons when, when I show this to the patient and they say, oh, I like how it's gonna look, I say, well, you know, here it seems to appear uh, to be okay, but sometimes in the mouth, um, there's things that happen, different uh, little optical illusions or the way the restorations sit where I want you to consider something. Um, and I have this conversation if we're just doing one central incisor or two like this, and I bring up the possibility of no prep veneers on these two teeth, on the lateral incisors. And I said, we may not need to do this. We might try this in. You'll be perfectly happy with how they look and we'll be all finished. But I want you to consider one thing, and that is that teeth oftentimes look the best when the front four teeth match, uh, or depending on how big your smile is or what your aesthetic needs are, you know, we'll go back eight or 10 teeth and go all the way back. But to do a single unit tooth is extremely difficult. And to do the two centrals is a little bit easier, but still sometimes there'll be a different shade than these other teeth. The eye teeth are always darker, so if we can get seven through 10 to be the same color, then we're really the same shade, then we're really doing well. So oftentimes I'll tell the patient it may not be necessary, but I want you to know that, you know, if making these two, we, we put two no prep veneers, so no shots, no drilling on these teeth, um, then all of a sudden your front four are gonna match and they aren't supposed to match these cuspids. And so that's really a great way to do it. Some people will jump at it then. Some people will like these teeth, but think that they're facially more prominent than these once we put these into place. And they'll say, well, maybe we should do those no prep veneers. I just like to bring it up to say, look, there's an ideal way to do these kinds of cases. Not everybody's into it. You know, the most ideal way would be to go all the way back to the second buys here, but maybe these teeth look fantastic. But if not, uh, if we're gonna have, you know, a big color, a big shade change between the centrals and the laterals, I just always bring it up so they know what's happening. But when we look at what the doctor's done where we don't quite have enough reduction to, um, to do this, but we're, we're close, you know, we can still make these, but they're gonna end up being probably a little bulkier on the facial than we were here. And so that screams out a little bit more for a couple of no prep veneers. Uh, we could also put a reduction coping on here and do a little more reduction for the doctor on the incisal edge and the facial and have him replicate that uh, in the mouth and uh, actually just waiting on a return phone call back from the doctor to see what the doctor wants to do. But that's really what got me thinking about this idea of what if you had two units like this and instead of just a suck down that kind of fits around here is a little hard to see, what if you had two units like this where you could keep trying them onto the preps in the patient's mouth and once they went all the way down and you had a passive seat, you would know that you were good to go. And actually, you'll see, I can't even get these really on here at all. And part of that's because of this, there's kind of a path of insertion issue. You can see that the prep on number nine is definitely uh, tilted towards the mesial like this, when in reality it should be kind of tilted, you know, a little more like this, just slightly to the distal. And even tooth number eight, when I look at it, it's got an inclination going this way, which is okay, but it's not, it's not drawing uh, with this one. And so this can probably help guide you. In fact, if this was clear and completely translucent, it would probably be more helpful to be able to see exactly where there was uh, contact between the two. And again, they did send out a suck down that goes over these preps for the doctor to try in the mouth, but I don't know, I mean, it's good, it helps, but it's kind of difficult sometimes because it's got to fit over all these other teeth. And so this is, case got me thinking about doing the D-Wax and being able to do this. So I don't doubt we're gonna end up with a good aesthetic result here. Uh, we might need to prepare uh, a little more on this tooth. If the doctor says, hey, we're turning pink, I can't take any more off, then that might be a time to tell the patient, you know, I, told, I talked to the lab and told them we couldn't reduce any more. So, this might be a little bit bulky. Uh, I can have him make those other two, no prep veneers right now, all four at the same time, or we can try these two and, and see what you think. But 
you know, kind of got to let the patient know. And there are times where the only way to really get a great aesthetic result would be with, you know, elective devitalization. You may have to do endo on this tooth to get enough facial reduction to get it back into the arch where it needs to be um, aesthetically. So um, the point being that uh, I'm going to continue to work on looking for a clear material to help us get that right. But that really is the key because if we can recreate this in the patient's mouth, then we know that we're going to be able to have permanent restorations that are milled from the exact same file as the diagnostic wax up. If the patient's not into the idea of endodontics and we're bumping into some you know, deep debt in here and it's starting to turn pink, uh, that would be the time where we could tell the lab, well, we prepped all we could on these two teeth and couldn't go any farther. Um, let's talk about doing two no prep veneers here. So anytime it's an anterior case where we're not doing the four anterior teeth or all eight from second by to second by, I will bring up the possibility of needing uh, some no prep veneers to complement whatever else we're doing in order to get an ideal smile. I don't force them on the patient. Um, I just say, let, let's keep this in the back of our mind because if we do this uh, and do all four or do all eight, we know we're going to get uh, the best aesthetic result that we can. And I know that's why you're doing it in, in the first place is for aesthetic. So um, it's nice to be able to know that uh, with a diagnostic wax up that you show the patient, if they accept it and you're able to prep that much away, um, we can now duplicate those exact size, contours, everything uh, in the final restorations with the millable material like Emacs or Bruxer.